Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our day number six. Let's see what we have today. Well, the very first problem we have here is we have two quantities. In column A, we have 7 raised to 27 minus 7 raised to 26. And in column B, we have 6 times 7 raised to 26. How do we figure out which column is bigger? If column A is bigger, the answer is A. If column B is bigger, the answer would be B. If it turns out that two columns are equal, the answer would be C. And if for some reason it cannot be determined which column is bigger, then in that case the answer is D. But of course that does not apply here. It does not apply here because we have numerical quantities in both columns. There has to be an answer. How can there not? How can there be an ambiguity? There is an answer here. There is an answer here. But this is not something that you can do with your calculator, even if you did have a calculator. Because in the GRE, they give you a simple calculator, and the SAT same thing. This is not something that you want to do. There has to be a strategy here. This is what we have to understand. Can you tell me what this quantity is? A times B minus B. Can you can you can you tell me how to simplify this this point? Don't say equation. It's not an equation. This is called an expression. An equation has to have an equal sign in it. This this wasn't an equation. This is an expression. It's called an expression, and it has two terms: term number one and term number two. How do we simplify this expression? Well, this is what we do. Do you find anything? Do you find anything co anything common in the first term and the second term? Yes. The B is common in the two terms. So let's take the B common out. If we take out the B, what are we left with from the first term? From the first term here, if we take out the B, we are left with A. And then from the second term, since we have taken out B, what are we left with? No, not 0, 1. Now you can see, if we were to undo, we have if we were to undo everything that we just did, we will get what we started out with. If we were to undo it, b times a is ba, which of course is same as ab. B t 2 times 3 is same as 3 times 2. And then b minus 1 is minus b. You see, we, we, get, we, start, we, we end up with what we started out with. So the, answer, so the conclusion is that a minus b, sorry, a times b minus b equals b times a minus 1. That is the concept that we need to apply here. Where is our a and where is our b? Well, I see 7 raised to 26, I see 7 raised to 26. Can we somehow convert this into 7 raised to 26? The answer is yes. So let's write this as 7 times. Tell you what, I, I, I forgot to tell you this thing last time also, I've been forgetting it. Uh, it's probably a bit too late in the game because I already told you what, what's going on. But even then, even then it's okay if you have not done so already to pause the video, pause it for a second, well not for a second, pause it and see if you can finish the problem yourself first. And then after you have your answer, come back and start it again. And even if I forget to tell you this thing, if you, if you make a habit of watching this video on a regular basis, always pause the video as I said of the problem, do it yourself and then continue listening. But that way you will learn more. You don't just sit there and, and math is not something that you can learn just by watching other people solve, solve the problem. You have to do it yourself. Mathematics is a skill, and just like any other skill, you, could, you, do, not good, you do not get a, a good at a skill by watching other people do the work. Uh, you're not going to learn how to play piano by watching other people play it. You're not going to be good at carpentry by watching other people build a chair. You have to do it yourself. 
so seven times so pause the video as I said do it and then come back to it so seven times 27 can be written as seven times 7 raised to 26 minus 7 raised to 26 there you go, voila, you see there is your 7 raised to 26 is our B our B here is the 7 raised to 26 times 7 minus 7 raised to 26 so our A is 7 and B is 7 raised to 26 so if we can take out 7 raised to 26 common, what are we left with the first term? We are left with 7. The 7 times 7 raised to 26, 7 times 7 raised to 26 is going to give us 7 raised to 27 that we started out with. And what are we left in the second term? 1. So we have 7 raised to 26 times 7 minus 1, which is 6 times 7 raised to 26, which is exactly what we have here. 6 times 7 raised to 26 and therefore the answer is C. That's it. The two quantities are equal. Want to do one more? Hold on. Very good. I'll give you a second to... Well, I was about to say I'll really give you a second to copy it down, but of course that doesn't apply now, because you can always rewind it and watch it again. That's the beauty of this watching on the camera, because it's unlike the classroom where when the teacher puts something on the blackboard and when he erases it, it's gone forever. Not here. Anyway, that was it. You want to do one more? Let's do it. So here we have a very similar problem. 9 raised to 10 versus 9 raised to 9 plus 3 times 9 raised to 8 plus 6 times 9 raised to 8 6 times 9 raised to 8 now what we are dealing here because we have 3 terms here what we are dealing with is something like this a times b plus a times c plus a times d here we have here we have three terms in this expression. Again, it's an expression, not an equation. Here we have three terms, and in all of the terms I see a common. So let's take, let's take out the a common. If we take out the a, what we're left in the first term? b. Because a times b is going to give us a b we need. What are we left in the second term? A c. Again, a times c is going to get you what we need here. What are we left in the third term? d. A times T. That is exactly what we need to do here. I see 9, nine raised to 8. I, I did it again, didn't I? Pause the video. Pause the video. Do the problem. And then come back. Okay? I keep forgetting it. Pause it right now. I already gave you the hint. Pause it right now and finish it up yourself. And then come back and finish and compare over. I see 9 raised to 8 here, I see 9 raised to 8 here, but I don't see a 9 raised to 8 here. Well, 9 raised to 9 can be written as 9 times 9 raised to 8, can't it? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to replace that 9 raised to 9 with 9 times 9 raised to 8. There you go. So here, Your 9 raised to 8 is your A. In this case, A equals 9 raised to 8. And the rest is very similar. So let's take out the 9 raised to 8 common. What are we left in the first term? 9. What are we left in the second term? 3. What are we left in the third term? We have 9 raised to 8 out already, so it's 6. So what we have here is, 9 times 8 versus plus times 9 plus 9, 18. 
Notice I wrote 18 as 2 times 9 because we're going to incorporate that 9 into this one. So 9 raised to 8 times 9 is 9 raised to 9 times 2 or 2 times 9 raised to 9. That's what we have in the first column. That's what it boils down to. 2 times 9 raised to 9. 9 raised to 10 can be written as 9 times 9 raised to 9. So the two quantities we have is 9 raised to 9, 9 times 9 raised to 9 versus 2 times 9 raised to 9. Of course, 9 times some quantity is going to be more than 2 times some quantity. I shouldn't have said it like that so cavalierly because I, I Cavalier was the word that I just used. We'll learn, we'll learn it in the future. I don't believe we have learned it. And of course I used it as an adverb. I said I shouldn't have said it so cavalierly. I need to go back and qualify that statement. What does it mean to qualify a statement? The word qualify has two meanings. I'm digressing here big time. Qualify has two meanings. One meaning of course you already know as in to qualify for a job or to have a qualification. What does it mean to qualify a statement? And if you do not know, it does not hurt to learn it. It does not hurt to expand one's vocabulary. And if you're interested, you should go to, I hope you can read that law. Twenty-seven, day twenty-seven. Just type in Kashwani Prab dash vocab dash day twenty-seven. Today is our day number six for man. If you, if you just type in Kashwani prep dash vocab dash dash 27, you will find this word qualify and you will learn the meaning of the word as, as I just used in the sentence. So what I said is that, this is what I said very cavalierly. Okay, listen to me. I'm going to say one more time to make you understand. I'm going to erase all of this thing because we don't need this anymore. I need the room. Because you see, this exam is about thinking. You have to be alert and you have to be quick. And I, I made a mistake. What, this is what I said. Watch here. What I said is that, of course, 9 times something has got to be more than 2 times something. I'm going to say it one more time. What I said is that 9 times something has got to be more than 2 times something. I said it so cavalierly, so so carelessly, so, so nonchalantly, so arrogantly, so carelessly as if you know I was so cocky of course nine times something has been more than two times something no I need to go back and qualify my statement I need to make sure that uh, I put some conditions on it what I should have said is that nine times some quantity is going to be more than two, two times some quantity as long as the quantity is positive as long as the quantity is positive as long as this quantity is positive you need to put that condition on it. You need to attach strings to that statement. You need to qualify that statement. As long as this something is positive. Otherwise, 9, 9 times something, of course, is more than 2 times something. But what if, what if that something happens to be negative? Then 9 times negative 3 is not going to be more than 2 times negative 3. No, sir. That's going to be wrong. Here, of course, we were right in saying, of course, 9 times, if had I said 9 times 9 raised to 9, of course, it's going to be more than 2 raised to, two raised to 9 raised to 2 times 9 raised to 9, I would have been okay. But that's not what I said. I didn't, I didn't spell it out. I didn't say 9 raised to 9. I just said something. I made a very general statement. I spoke in a very generic way. Generic. What does it mean? These are some words that you might think that you know the meaning of, but it does not hurt, as I've said it told you many times before, as I tell all my students, it does not hurt to learn the words properly. Twenty-four means 
24 means that if you were to type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash 24, you will learn this word generic. I spoke in very generic terms, very general terms, very non-specific terms, uh, because I said nine times something has to be more than two times something, which of course we know is not true now. That's uh, I should have said as long as that something is positive, which in this case it is. So well, therefore, nine raised to nine is more than two raised to nine. And the answer is. That's it. That was that was the end for today. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found uh, you got something out of it. Also, work on your vocabulary. These are these are not these are excellent uh, problems to practice to to hone your math skills uh, for the SAT, GRE, and GMAT. But of course, if you're preparing for any of those tests, you also need to uh, practice uh, work on your English language, particularly your vocabulary. Because a lot of people have trouble with the vocabulary on the exam. Improve your vocabulary gradually. Don't try to don't try to devour all the words. Uh, people have this. Uh, I've seen people where they go out and buy these books that are sold in the market with 1,000 words or 500 words, and they try to devour the whole bloody thing in one month. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. You cannot sit there and memorize 50 words a day. You have to do it gradually, slowly, little by little which is what these videos are intended for. I cover very few words every day, gradually and slowly, you will improve your vocabulary. Anyway, that was, info, that was, that was the end, of, end for today. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor over the internet via Skype. I also do personal private tutoring face-to-face, -face, over, over the telephone, whatever it, is that, whatever it is that you desire for GRE, Gmail, SAT and TOEFL. You can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com, send me an email from there, and you will get hold of me. Alright? Thank you.